Welcome to my long-awaited vlog series where I take you along with me on my jobs and learn with me along the way. In this second episode, you'll observe me resolving low water pressure on a system and learn how to automate the purging of a filtration device. You may learn things here that you wouldn't otherwise learn anywhere else, so come along for the ride. During my initial assessment a month previous, the water pressure was so low that the front pop-ups wouldn't even pop up. At the time, I didn't see any obvious reasons, such as water puddling somewhere from a broken pipe, etc. I did notice that the sprinkler valves were all one inch inline valves, yet the backflow device and its piping were three quarter inch. I also noticed that the copper piping coming into the house was one inch. So what was the true size of the incoming pipe on the property? If it was one inch and they just reduced down to three quarter just to save money on the backflow device to the detriment of the water flow, could I reverse that and change it back to one inch and thus help the situation? I checked the water meter to see what size it was, yet there was no marking on it regarding the size, which is really out of the ordinary. There was a brass pressure regulator after the backflow device and it was adjusted all the way out which means someone else had attempted to improve the pressure as well. Uh, what's up, Doc? My next step was to remove the old backflow device with its attached and maxed out brass pressure regulator and check the incoming water pressure after digging up the piping to see what was down there. I found there was only three quarter inch PVC Schedule 40 coming in and it bumped up to one inch after the T to the backflow device, so I am guessing that was to accommodate the piping for the house's fire sprinkler system. Before installing the temporary shutoff valve, I glued a female adapter to the incoming pipe so I could screw on adapters to accommodate the water pressure gauge. It showed 90 PSI, which is pushing the envelope for irrigation systems without a brass pressure regulator installed. But I wanted to be sure that I could get the front lawn system working properly before assuming I needed one. Good thing I did. To avoid any restrictions in the water flow, I built a one inch shutoff assembly and piping. Now that this was in place, I turned on that front lawn line and voila, the sprinklers popped up. I checked the water pressure and it was now 15 PSI. So that was a big improvement. It's still supposed to be a minimum of twice that much at 30 PSI, but hey. While this was running, I saw the water pouring out from the bark near this pop-up and pulled the bark back. I could see that it may be a broken pipe or riser, so I dug up the pop-up and cut through some tree roots from the neighboring birch tree. The roots had busted the riser. Now we need to get that riser out of there, the broken riser. So we put it in there kind of at an angle. Well, not kind of. Put it at an angle. Spin that puppy out. And there is mud down in there, so I'm going to have to flush that out. You can see it down in there. I'll see if I can get that out with a screwdriver or the needle nose, and then I'll flush it out. And to flush it out, I'll just use a combination of risers that I have in here already with an elbow so it shoots it out away from the hole. Okay, let's flush it out. Well, we don't see any water coming out down there, so that's good. Hopefully it was just that riser. And this is working fine. There's no more water running down here so that was apparently it just a broken riser now everybody's happy now if i step on mm, that guy's not happy i see water flowing out of there look at all that water dang 
Well, I've got another one to dig up. But anyway, let me see what happens when I step on the riser now, or step on the pop-up now. Yeah, that's fine. With that pipe break fixed, let's see what the new water pressure looks like. Wow, look at that. It's 30 PSI, right where it should be. That is solid roots down there from this sycamore tree. And the pipe goes under right about there. And there's a riser in there somewhere, a broken riser, a T, with a broken riser on it from the pop-up that was right here. But I am not finding where it came through. So this is going to be interesting. So after chopping all these roots out, this is the one that was laying over the pipe. You can see how it grew over the form of the pipe and that's probably where the riser was. This was in here like that. And that's where the riser, the T in the riser is. Fortunately, it looks like I did not damage the pipe. So I'll just take that riser out and put the new pop-up in there. I have the riser out. This has been busted for a long time. Look at the roots. Okay, a new one's installed, and the other one also. So I'll turn it on and see what happens. Looking good. Okay, I see that nozzle needs to be turned around over there. That's the one that had the gauge on it. I'm going to put the gauge back on it and see what our pressure is now that we've got all this fixed. Okay, we're right at just under 40 psi, so it's good. After chopping that out successfully, I replaced the riser and pop-up, and now the pressure was up to 38 PSI. That is perfect. I like having it up there because it gives a little kick to the sprays. Now the owner needs to decide whether she's going to comply with code and have a new backflow device installed. That's a job for Mr. Backflow. The next job I visited that day was back to this property that was featured in this three-part video series about fixing lawn coverage issues. Here's what the lawn looks like now after fixing the coverage. It started out being brown. Anyway, today I'm going to automate the flushing of his disk filter that he has installed on his new well system for his irrigation. Normally this disc filter would need to be taken apart regularly to clean it out, but automating this process will free up his time. This will come on once a week when no irrigation is on and flush the minimum amount of time possible, which is one minute. He will attach a garden hose and move it around to water his trees and shrubs. You can also dig a pit and create a French drain using rock and put the garden hose down into the pit. Yabba dabba doo! I saw one guy just put the hose out on his lawn. Here this client has had a well drilled for his irrigation system for his orchard and for his landscaping. 
and we have the power boxes here water coming out of the tank here with a shutoff and then the booster pump and we have the gauge and the gauge is showing that we have 75 psi static with nothing flowing through it and then we have a faucet that's cool and another shut off before the disc filter and and then another shut off before it goes to the irrigation system as it is right now this disc filter has to be flushed out periodically like that under high pressure what we want to do is to automate it so this would come off and I put a inline valve sprinkler valve on there and then we'd run the wiring over there and install the timer on the back side there I've got an adapter on here. This is a pipe thread to hose thread adapter called an N1. And then he's gonna attach a garden hose to this and run it out there to whatever tree he wants to have it on each day. I've got this wired up using 18.3 wire and uh, of course the watertight wire nuts as usual and it's looped on i gave it a couple loops i always want to give extra wire at both ends and then i ran it under the bark i pulled the bark back using a square point shovel Pulled the bark back, ran the wire under there, and then to hold it down because it's coiled, it wants to stay coiled, I use these jute staples and a little six pound sledgehammer. And ran it along here and then ran it up inside this pipe here. Where are we at here? Ran it up inside this three-quarter PVC pipe, which just shoves up underneath inside the X2 timer. And we're good to go. I put the writing uh, here on the pipe facing this direction because of the aesthetics of people seeing the piping. As you see, the conduit was done the same way. That way when people are roaming around out here, it's just an aesthetic thing. It's not any big deal, but it just looks nicer. And with the programming on this for that filter I just have it set for Sunday night 8 o'clock and it's only running for one minute that's all you need to do I have it set like that at, at 8 o'clock because that way I know that none of this drip or his lawn sprinklers are running at that time well that's the conclusion of this day's vlog I hope you enjoyed it and learned some things if this vlog format was beneficial to you, please let me know in the comment section. If there are any improvements to how I presented it, please let me know. I depend on your feedback for making this channel helpful. Thank you for helping out. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation 
And also remember the resources site link below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.